Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, North Schuylkill. I'm Zach Zerman. And I'm Kylie Blazowski. As early as last July, the media had begun proclaiming 2016 to be one of the worst years in recent history. Backlash can be attributed to the cutthroat presidential campaign that left half the country looking for a safe space, random acts of terror, and a string of celebrity deaths. With that, we can only hope that 2017 will be better. Like most people, the new year brings about change and renewal through resolutions and improvement for your health, finances, and attitude. Heather Laura has more coverage on what people here at North Circle are planning to do to improve their health and well-being in 2017. Hey guys, it's Heather within the news, and I'm here with Mr. Roseberry. So, what are your New Year's resolutions? Well, I've thought long and hard about my New Year's resolution, and I've decided that um, I'm going to try to be less competitive during the year of 2017. I picked it because I've always competed my whole life, and I'd have to say that sometimes I'm a bad sport. I like to win, and so whenever I am not winning, I can sometimes be childish, and I can sometimes not be a good loser. So I want to try to not be quite as competitive, and I want to try to be a nicer, more gentler, kind uh, person when it comes to any type of competition. I'm here with Mrs. Wazowski. So what are your New Year's resolutions? Well, I don't have any New Year's resolutions specifically for myself, but I have two for my daughter, who is five years old. Um, what are the resolutions? Well, for her, for next year, I would like her to, number one, tell the truth all the time, and number two, take better care of her teeth. And then I asked her if she had any New Year's resolutions for me. And she said her New Year's resolutions for me are that I would leave her alone. So I told her if she tells the truth all the time and takes better care of her teeth, I will leave her alone. I'm here with Mr. Tom Titian. So what are your New Year's resolutions? I have two. One is to stay fit all year so that next year I don't have to do dump the plump. And two, and I think Mr. Wazlowski should also do this, is just to be nicer to people. <laughs> Especially to me. I have a couple of New Year's resolutions. One that, that seems to be uh, one that I'm focusing on a lot is to, to use my phone less. I feel like everyone is, is really connected to their phones and it, it's something I mean, I'm, I'm trying to, to do without. Um, I, I think it's, it kind of sets a bad example for my kids. I have young kids and you know, they're always you know, on iPads and video games and things like that. So I'm trying to set a better example for them. Students in the junior high have already been working on improving themselves primarily due to a program that was initiated in October. The positive behavior intervention and support system was designed to redirect student behavior through a system of rewards. Students can gain Spartan Bucks for a number of reasons and then can use them to buy items. All students who have followed the guidelines of the program are also invited to the reward day which will be held on Friday, January 20th. Jordan Donmoyer has more with Mrs. Doherty Wade about the program. I'm Jordan Donmoyer. I'm here with Mrs. Doherty Wade to talk about Spartan Bucks. Um, so what are Spartan Bucks? Well, this is a Spartan Buck right here, and they come in $1 or $5 amounts, and students receive Spartan Bucks for doing different activities within the classroom. Okay. And what kind of things can students do to receive Spartan Bucks? A variety of different things to promote positive behavior. It can be anything from being kind to another student or volunteering or having a really great question or doing things around the classroom to help keep it a safe environment like making sure the chairs are pushed in. Um, it can really vary a lot depending on what's going on in the classroom and I think different teachers use it in different ways. All right. And this being the first year, what is the overall goal of rewarding Spartan Bucks? I think the overall goal is just to remind the junior high students what appropriate behavior should be in school and you know just promote those appropriate positive behaviors that can help make this a very successful learning environment. And this is a poster that can show all of the different things that 
these students you know should be doing in in the classroom and in the hallways and in the building and they can get Spartan Bucks for promoting any one of these things uh, within the building all right there you go that's how you earn your Spartan Bucks so this is Brimel Brimel what do you think about the Spartan Bucks well they're pretty good I mean since we've switched from Miss Leib to Miss Manzik you know I haven't gotten that much because Miss Leib handed them out a lot and I'm really disappointed about that. You know, all, all I have is six. That's only enough to buy like a cookie. Uh, well, they're pretty good all in all, but the cookies are pretty good. I think truthfully, they're a great idea. I mean, there's loads of improvement, even though I lost Miss Live, and Miss Fowler kind of gives them out like candy, but uh, I think there could be loads of inspiration and creativity with this. One of them that I want to kind of introduce is a Spartan bank to hold them so they don't lose them like I already did. I have mixed emotions on them because, like, I like them, but, like, there should be more stuff that you should be able to buy with them. Well, I think they're a good way for students to get courage on their behavior, but I kind of think three strikes is a little too much to go to a reward day. All right, and what do you mean by that three strikes for the reward there? What happens? If you get three strikes, you will not be able to go to the reward day. So there's punishment for bad behavior as well as good behavior. All right, thank you. In sports news, the swimming and diving team continues to be one of the most successful groups of the winter athletes. After a brief co-op with the Monoy area, the pool had been reopened and swimmers have returned home. Last night, the swim team took on Pottsville area in one of the last regular season competitions. Here's more from that last night. I'm here with the Aqua Spartans. They're 5-0 and after the biggest meet of the season. How do you guys feel? <laughs> it's a big win today. When's the next biggest uh, meet at home? Um, is it next? Oh, at home? Uh, next meet is against Blue Mountain away on Thursday next week. And then the following Tuesday, we're here again at 4.30, and I'm pretty sure it's against Tamaqua. Be there. I'm here with Spartan swimmer, Reginald David Crawford, known as the Scuba Spartan. How many wins did you get tonight? Two. Out of how many races? Two. Out of boy. What was the key to your success tonight? Swim fast. How do you plan on continuing that success all season? By swimming fast. All right, thank you. The girls' basketball team is also starting to build momentum as they prepare for a highly anticipated game against Pottsville next Friday the 13th. Let's check in with Coach Wetzel for his thoughts on the season so far and anticipation for the remainder of the schedule. I'm Audrey within the news here with Lady Spartan basketball coach, Mr. Wetzel. Uh, is your season going as expected? Uh, the season started out a little slow, but after the first two games since then, we're 5-1, and one, and I think finally now we're going in the right direction. Why is Pottsville always a good game for the season? One of our goals every year is to make the school league playoffs. And in order to do that, you usually have to be able to beat Pottsville and Blue Mountain. Uh, Pottsville has a very good program. Uh, only two teams go from our division. So it's very important that every year we at least split or beat Pottsville. Uh, how do you plan to prepare for Pottsville? Uh, we have scouted Pottsville five times. Uh, I have four videotapes of their games. Uh, the team and I will sit down for approximately about an hour. Uh, we'll watch video of them offensively and defensively. Uh, see what they do to prepare, and then we'll go to practice and work on what we saw in the video. Uh, we play Pottsville Friday, January 13th at home. Uh, it would be great if all our students could come out and support the Lady Spartans. Uh, big game. We need, to, we need the W. If we can get that win, we're looking at a chance to go through the first round of the league play undefeated. Uh, it would be great if they, I think the girls want everybody to wear black T-shirts for a blackout and just come out and support the team. We'll need a lot of support that night. In the News will not be airing next Friday due to midterm exams. Midterms will be administered during one standard class period rather than the extended 90-minute sessions that previously existed. The schedule has condensed to cover science and social studies related courses on Friday, January 13th and English and math related courses on Tuesday, January 17th. A review day for each midterm is planned for the day before the exam is given, so plan accordingly. Because of the drastic change, we wanted to know how teachers are incorporating changes to fit in the new format. Uh, Mike Russell here within the news. Uh, Mr. Kowski, now midterms have been shortened down from the hour and a half to a 45-minute time limit now. How does it affect uh, making your tests 
in general? Well, I had to go back and modify things. I had to cut back on the number of questions that were given so the students can complete the test in the time allotted. And I tried to simplify things a little bit because uh, the students aren't going to get to go home half a day and study, so I'm not trying to play gotcha on this midterm. I'm trying to help. Uh, do you have any advice for students when studying for midterm or will it change in any way by how they study? Or Well, I would look over the key points for each unit or chapter that the students um, covered because you're not going to be able to get too much in depth because you're going to have a shorter amount of questions. So it's going to be more... Um, not as detailed as it would normally be. Um, I'm, I'm finding it very difficult to figure out how to make a test that's gonna cover two marking periods that's gonna fit in one 44 minute period. And even the students themselves reminded me that don't forget, you have to pass the test out and in a class like a 30, that's gonna take a couple minutes so it's even a little less than 44 minutes. So I'm not really sure how I'm going to make a test to cover all that material in a way that every student can finish it. Because now with this schedule, there's no extra time like between lunches to have students finish the test if they didn't, you know, if they were slower and didn't get finished. So I am very concerned about the, the time frame. So uh, how's it going to affect the students in your class with the new way the midterms are going? Uh, as far as that goes, I, I don't think they're going to have as much time to study. I know some of them are worried about that because before they were left out early and you had that e extra time, which now you won't have. And you're not studying just for one test. You're studying for at least two. Some people have three. And, you know, not, yeah, okay, everybody never didn't always study, but the people that do want to use that time don't have it now. So I, I do think there are some students that are concerned about it. Three, two, one, Happy New Year! I'm Zach Zerman. And I'm Kylie Blazowski. We're signing off. See you later, Norskookle.